Yeah, no problem. Um, my name's Eve Redunz. I'm studying a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science. Um, my slogan is an even better union. So just, I guess, some, I guess, what, what do you think makes a good board member? Um, I suppose for me, what I, um, I value in a board member um, specifically is a progressive attitude. Um, I'd love to see a more progressive board. Um, I also understand that you need a lot of commitment to be a board director. You need to be someone who values the union and, and really has a passion for seeing um, what it can become. Um, so there are a lot of candidates running this year as well. Have you given thought on who you'd support or who you'd want to support you? Yeah, um, I suppose it plays back on what I just said. Um, that there are a great number of candidates and all of them I would be happy to work alongside with. Um, but yeah, ultimately I would um, prefer a progressive board, so um, I'd love to work with progressive candidates. Um, so you probably know the makeup of the current board and if you are elected, um, you'll be involved in voting for the president and other higher positions. Mm -hmm. um, have you given thought to who you would vote for for president? If you were to be elected? Yeah, um, yeah, to be perfectly honest, that's not what I'm concerning myself with at the moment. Um, I've met and I, I know um, all of the presidential candidates. Um, I think there'd be merits to each of them being presidents. Um, and I suppose during my campaign and like hopefully beyond that, um, I'd be looking to understand the vision that they each have for the union. Um, I also would want um, the students that I represent their ideas to be reflected in my decision um, and also my caucus's decisions. Um, so you said you your caucus's decision, so are you a member of political party? Yeah, um, I'm a member of the Labour Party, um, more specifically the socialist left faction. Um, I'm a member of that party because I believe in their values um, of, of namely unionism, feminism, democracy and socialism. Um, I suppose that's what I would be looking to bring to my campaign and my directorship. So um, in terms of uni factions, um, are you a part, you're, you're a part of NLS? Yeah, I'm a member of NLS. Cool. And so I guess you probably knew about um, the split recently that happened between the Sydney Labour students and, you know, National Labour students. Yeah. Um, and you did say a bit earlier that you were interested in progressive politics and that's what you want to bring to the board. Mm -hmm. So why did you choose to stay with NLS and not go to the more specifically progressive side? Yeah. Um, my decisions for staying with NLS um, are because I personally didn't experience any of the... Um, any of the issues that certain SLS members did um, in the National Caucus. Um, I completely understand that there are issues within the National Caucus, but I didn't see the advantage in disaffiliating. Um, in terms of time commitments, what are yours like for next year? Would you think you'd have enough time should you be elected? Yeah, as a science student, um, I've, I've had to manage to um, to understand time management, I suppose. Um, next year and the next semester, I'll be looking to scale down units as well um, so that I have um, as much time as possible to spend um, on, on board issues. Um, so as, a, as one of the female candidates, um, one of the, I guess, more controversial things that people have been talking about is affirmative action. Mm -hmm. So what is your view on AA? My thoughts on affirmative action, um, Basically, I'm a very strong advocate for affirmative action. Um, I see its merits as a, a self-defeating cycle in that the more women who are elected into these higher positions, the more women who um, see that and who understand that it's an attainable goal and, and will strive for that. Um, and then that, in turn, diminishes the need for affirmative action. Um, I, I suppose that there are issues with it in terms of looking at it from an annual um, perspective. And that's why I'm really glad that the current women's portfolio holder, um, Hannah Morris, has undertaken reviews of affirmative action. Um, I think that's really important to continue that on annually. Um, but until 
the number of women candidates consistently matches the number of men candidates, I think it has a place in union. So if you were to be elected um, on affirmative action alone, um, mm -hmm. would you take that position on board? Yeah, I, I definitely would. Um, I don't think affirmative action diminishes the achievements of women at all. I think it's there to lend a helping hand and it does that greatly, but I don't think at all that it makes um, it makes their achievements less. There's still obstacles in the nomination process, in the campaign process, and in the election process that women have to face. Okay, um, so maybe we can just talk about policy now. Sure. Um, one of your promises is the free access mm -hmm. um, and, expansion, and the expansion of access. So where, where would that money come from? Where would you be able to source? Um, it's, that's a policy that everyone is very keen on seeing. It's something that I'm really um, passionate about because I see student unionism as something that all students should have the chance to, to get involved in um, regardless of financial um, impediments. Um, the money for that, it, it's, it's something that the board is, is currently working on and has been working on for a long time. Um, I suppose it's, it's, not, it's never going to happen overnight. I don't um, propose it'll happen within my term, um, but it's something that I would work consistently towards. Um, in terms of where the money would come from, that means expanding the union's revenue. Um, it means expanding the investments that the union has, um, looking at opening up different markets. Um, it's all about basically sort of changing the union to create more revenue um, for that process. Um, so I guess one of the things that we've been coming across is the SAF, mm -hmm. um, the, the money that we're getting from SAF, and I guess it looks as though um, we will have a Liberal government next year, um, if the polls are correct. Um, so, you know, you said you, you would be looking to more, uh, you know, getting money from different places. If we weren't, if to have SAF next year, where would that money come? And if, you know, free access was fulfilled, as you'd like it to be. Yeah. Um, SAF is incredibly vulnerable, in a, a very vulnerable place at the moment, especially with the threat of, Abbott, of, the threat of an Abbott government. Um, I suppose this year's negotiations were quite successful for the union. Um, that $3.1 million, if that was to be withheld next year, that's a very big issue. That's something that the current board are looking to, to make sure that the union is financially independent um, if, if that comes to um, fruition. Um, I suppose it, the, the policy ideas like free access, that definitely would, be, would have to be put on hold. I'm not ignorant to that fact. Um, but like I said, there's ways to, to make the, the union financially independent. That's things like revenue raising and cost, cu uh, cost cutting. Um, I would be looking to make sure that the union only raises revenues in ways that don't affect the prices students pay um, and cutting costs to departments that don't directly affect students' welfare and student services. Okay. Um, one of your policies here is you want to implement a health and yeah, um, that's something that Sophie Stanton was quite um, interested in and, and positive about during her campaign. Um, basically, it's it's a week like um, the Indigenous Festival, the Interfaith Festival, where the union would run various events around health and well-being. Um, so stuff like yoga in the quad in the morning, um, like marathons around um, campus. Um, but also workshops and seminars on, on how students can maintain their health because it's quite a big issue as a student to make sure that your health is looked after. Um, so one other policy that you had was eth ethical and sustainable products in all USU outlets. So if profits were to be decreased as a result of these ethical um, products that you wish to introduce, um, would you still go ahead with that kind of policy? Um, the way I look at it is it would be sort of a continuation on from the way that the union achieved Rainforest Alliance coffee. 
um, the way it works is that universities um, and their student unions basically pool their buying power um, into an association called TAG. Um, that association looks um, at all, all the suppliers that unions go through. Um, that's, they came up with basically a portfolio of, of coffee options. Um, the board chose from, from them which would be best. Um, I, I, that would be what I would be looking to do with that. So each time that a contract comes up for review, going through TAG, looking at the best options, um, making sure that there's a cost benefit analysis done so that students aren't having to pay more but are getting better products. Um, how do you think your policies, or what do you think the USU should be doing with uh, satellite campuses? Yeah, okay, so satellite campuses are, are something that I think the union should try a lot harder to encompass. Um, it's difficult <clears throat> in terms of um, location, basically in issues like um, SCA and the CON because there is like physical separation. Um, in terms of making Mallet Street um, more included in union activities, th I think that's, that's easier um, to bring them um, onto um, the da uh, Camper Down Darlington campus, but also bring the union to them. I think um, it, it would benefit each of these campuses if the week-long events and the festivals were carried out onto their campuses as well in a, in a really um, committed way so that they don't just um, get benefits from union outlets, they also get it from student programs. So another one of your um, policies was to have keep cop discounts. Mm -hmm. So um, in most union outlets, it's, there's already a 35% discount. So how is your policy different to what's already there? Um, I talked to Andrew Woodward yesterday about the keep cup discounts. Um, basically what I wanted to see happen is um, make sure that there's larger discounts in terms of actually buying a keep cup because they're pretty expensive um, and, and using that keep cup. Um, it's all very well to have a 15% access discount, but there also needs to be a, a larger um, discount um, when using a uh, keep cup. So one on top of the access. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so another thing, you were the women's events coordinator this year with the mm -hmm. USU. Um, so one event that we thought you were organising was the women's breakfast. Um, so what happened with that event, I guess, that the follow through the women leadership breakfast yeah, yeah, the leadership that breakfast. that did go ahead okay. um it didn't go ahead on the proposed date of march the 7th because of the staff strike mm -hmm. um that also affected the uh, international women's day festival that i planned um but the the breakfast did go ahead um it we had speakers so we had two speakers one from the law faculty and um one of them was the um, president of the, no, sorry, the CEO of um, the uh, women's electoral lobby. Um, that's something, it was a great success. There were quite a few um, people there from CNS exec positions, um, from um, board directors, and from general women students. What other things did you do as in your time as women's events? Yeah. Um, during O Week, I organised an event, a mural painting event. Mm -hmm. um, that was, um, I, I think it was a, a really great success. We um, created a mural to go in the women's room. Um, and what I thought was really great was that we had a lot of women who wouldn't usually um, participate in those kind of events, but because it was an O Week event, there, there was a lot more interest. People were coming into the women's room, they were understanding what the women's room is, what it's about, um, and how they are free to use it whenever they can. Um, and I also ran the International Women's Day Festival on uh, International Women's Day, Friday the 8th of March. Um, that went really well too. Um, I, I suppose 
possibly looking to move that onto a day where there's more people on campus would be a great idea. Yeah. Um, would you be able to identify a mistake or shortcoming that the US board has had in the last year and what would you do to rectify that? Like? Yeah, um, I think probably the most obvious shortcoming of the union just this semester has been the Indigenous Festival. Um, I think it, it's a very contentious issue, but it, it's very obvious that the union should have involved Indigenous community um, more and should have a lot more consultation around things that affect them, such as the hiring of Indigenous officers and the, um, the planning of the Indigenous Festival. I guess um, to kind just a few last few, last few questions. Um, so, as an NLS member, uh -huh. um, being part of an active faction on campus, will you take advice from your caucus when making decisions if you are up to be elected on board? Yes, um, I I will um, take advice from my caucus absolutely. Um, but one of the things that I'm really interested in doing um, to keep myself accountable for the promises I've made is keeping in contact with all the people who have helped me develop my policy, with all the groups of students whose policy I, I am representing, um, to make sure that they are getting what they wanted when they supported me. And say there was a situation where you disagreed with what the rest of the caucus said. Um, you know, they had a majority vote of a particular policy that you were really passionate about, or those particular groups that you would be in contact with were really passionate about. Mm. How would you react in that situation? I suppose that I would consult with other board directors at the time, um, but I suppose I am bound by my caucus, and unless does bind, um, I would make every effort to make my point of view and the other students' point of view adequately represented in caucus, um, but I am bound by the vote. Um, so you say here that you'd like to work more closely, if you were elected, you'd like to work more closely with the SLC. Mm -hmm. um, is that just with these community gardens that you talk about in your policy statement, or are there other ways that you'd like to work together with the SLC? Yeah, um, I think there are an, a number of benefits um, to working closer with the SRC, um, purely in terms of financially, um, in terms of SAF negotiations, it would be great to have um, a, a multi-year SAF agreement with the SRC. Um, but I suppose at a more grassroots level, um, it would be great to be able to work with them um, in terms of the Women's Collective and the Queer Collective um, and seek um, in, in realising issues and ideas that they have um, with union funding, I think that would be a really great outcome. Do you think that would make um, specific portfolios like the queer portfolio and women's portfolio already active in the USU a bit irrelevant if you were to you know, work with that equivalent in the SRC when they're kind of separate bodies? Um, I don't think it would make them irrelevant. I think simply by having the women's portfolio holder or the queer portfolio holder talking to the um, the same sort of people in the SRC, that I think that could only really increase outcomes that they're trying to have. Um, I, yeah, I don't think that um, union representatives would would be irrelevant. Um, well, we should wrap up soon, but. Like in, in terms of transparency, when do you think it's appropriate for you and your meetings to go to camera? Yeah, um, that's something that a lot of students, a lot of members are concerned about. I understand that there needs to be a certain level of confidentiality within the union, um, specifically financial matters, um, but there should be absolute transparency in the visions of the union and where we're heading. Um, I think in terms of um, of confidentiality, that I, I suppose I can't comment on it now as I don't I don't know what they discuss. For example, like, what's your opinion on tweeting staff members at meetings? Like, currently it's not allowed. Yep. What's your opinion on that? Um, I think that's more of a, a privacy issue. Um, I, I suppose I'd have to come back to when I. It, 
hopefully if I'm elected, um, looking at, at how that works. Yeah.